Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today we've got a special guest, Fat to Fit Golf, our buddy Sam Roberge from uh, Quebec, Canada. He'll be on the um, on the podcast today. Yeah, Sam is someone I kind of started talking with last summer when I started up my solo golf page, and it's been cool kind of watching his swing progress throughout the the summer. And he was out playing a whole bunch of golf. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it's more the same this coming year. Yeah, I'm ready for a smooth swing and a smooth interview. We got a special guest today, Sam Roberge. Why don't you give us a, just a quick little intro about yourself? I'm French Canadian over here. Live in Quebec, Canada. Um, I dove deep into golf in the last few years. I got hooked, like like many of you guys probably like, <laughs> yeah. like you've all done at some point in your lives. Um, took a while for me. It wasn't until the later years in my life that I that I discovered golf, and it's been quite the quite the journey as far as passion and just really liking it and finding so many good things out of it. You know, mental health, physical activity, social. I'd love to work in, in the golf industry one day. So I'm kind of all in and just hoping that, you know, slowly in life, golf is is a bigger part of my life. Yeah, I remember we had kind of talked before, like, just about, like, what the, uh, like, your ideal job would be in the golf industry if you had to pick a job. What would that be so, for you? So the reason I started my Instagram account was kind of to dive into the digital marketing world. Mm -hmm. um i've always been fascinated with like our collective viewership that we have when we all put our eyeballs on one project and it makes that project spark and it allows you know certain certain things and sometimes money comes in and so i've always been fascinated by that but not really on a personal level um mm -hmm. i don't really want to be an influencer I i'd love yeah. to work in the golf industry one day marketing is something that i'm interested in but also like events i, I love the idea of the yeah. community in golf and I think, you know, both professionally or even with like some companies, I think there are so many opportunities with with the public and the youth and education. So I'd love to find something in golf related to to all that. I don't know what it is yet. And it's kind of hard in Quebec to figure out, you know, full time jobs because we don't have golf most of the year. So, right. Yeah, still, exactly. Still a work in progress, what I do want to do. But I know that I'd like golf to be part of it. That's for sure. It's pretty cool too that I mean you're even in the early stages of kind of figuring it out that again you can you know see a bunch of different angles and like like you were saying with the education part or like the camaraderie part like all that kind of stuff there's so many different avenues that you can go with especially with the digital marketing stuff. Yeah, and I'm kind of taking it slow like I, I'm a retired teacher. I, I'm 31 years old, but I just quit teaching after like 6 years of school, so it's kind of a early exit for me and it's just mm -hmm. figuring out professionally, you know, how I'm, um, how I'm going to do it and what's the path to a full-time go golf job, which is like I said, not the easiest thing, but mm -hmm. slowly, you know, participating in whatever I can find volunteering. And I worked uh, a summer golf camp for youth last year. So just little things. Um, I, I like the idea of using Instagram to inspire people a little bit sharing about my my own journey in, in golf which like i said came later in life and it's something that i had done before but i wasn't comfortable with my weight to just go out there and golf by myself so that's sure. that was a big hindrance and something that you know made it so that it took so long for me to really allow myself to just say screw it i'm gonna golf and i'm gonna enjoy it and that's how the love story happened <laughs> yeah i mean it's been fun kind of watching your spring or your yeah. swing like just it's looking so good it's i was showing so gary good, some of the dude. stuff and it's like i remember we started talking a lot at the beginning of last season and just seeing your game kind of progress throughout the summer was cool and being out there yeah. golfing a bunch Th thanks for the good comments i get that a lot and i don't feel that confident in my swing so i guess there's a natural part to it that makes it look good um mm -hmm. still getting mixed results and i think big a big part of it <laughs> is um just accepting whatever comes as far as a result as far as a score and not focus too much on the process but it hasn't been easy because i kind of hyper focus on you know bettering my swing and i really want to put in the time and i want to i want to try to see where i can take my game so there's that that focus that's not always so good when you hyper focus on on mm -hmm. something um the weight also is something that's difficult to manage with my swing i do have you know obesity problems still that i'm that i'm battling and i have that big belly so as i'm losing <laughs> weight the the swing path is still you know changing it seems like from week yeah, yeah. to week or from month to month so i, yeah, I would be like true. a big fade guy at the start or 
big slicer like most of us. <laughs> And then yeah. as I've been losing weight, and see, it seems like that pad is coming inside a little bit more. And then now I've gone to hooks. So it's <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a journey to try to figure out that that swing with the weight loss at the same time. That's got to be so yeah. frustrating, too, because it's like, man, you fe- you figure out your swing, your swing. And then all of a sudden it's off. But then you realize it's because that you're losing weight. So you're like, now you got to redo it. That's got to be like a frustrating process, but also like a positive one at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It, <laughs> it comes from a positive, so it's all good and I'm I'm cool with it. But I only had about a stretch of two weeks last, last summer where I was like, oh, I've got a pretty good swing going. The driver is going <laughs> straight. And I was like, hmm, maybe I figured this out. And then that was all gone by, by the end of the year. Um, mostly the driver, I would say, has been the most most frustrating club for me trying to learn how to hit it. Um, it's still still giving me anxiety and trouble of the T, let's just say. Yeah, same with me. It's it's always a hit or miss. Work in progress. Um, I don't know yeah, what it is of... that, that makes it such. Like It's not that different from what you're doing with the other clubs. It's just the angle, but I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just hard to square it off. And like I said, it was slices at the beginning, and now we've got the hooks, and some people are saying swing path and others are telling me I need a new shaft. And then it's like, where do we go from there? Yeah. yeah. So one other thing I want to touch on was, you know, you talked about just kind of growing that golf community and collaborating with others. And I know you did a, a whole holiday food drive at the end of 2023. I just wanted to ask how you kind of went about pulling that off. And, uh, you know, it's just a really cool idea. Yeah, so like I said in the beginning, like me being on Instagram was always more a curiosity of how we can get people together, how, how we can bring eyeballs on a project and kind of decide to lift it from there and and see where the collective aspect take, takes it. Um, one of my wild dreams would be to do like a community-owned golf course. That would be something nice. that I would find fascinating, like just being able to own and, and buy a golf course and give people jobs and, and all – I'll own it, you know, collectively and not have one person benefit from from that big project like we see Mm. influencers online and nothing against those those influencers. Um, But that's a big task. And I've dove into it and I've, you know, investigated a little bit what what it would take to get it done and legally and from a financial standpoint and just getting a, a start point going, it's kind of difficult. So I've decided to go a little bit smaller. And that's where Mm -hmm. that golf community food drive kind of uh, came together and I had some rough times personally in the last few years financially. So I know how, how difficult it can be food wise. Mm-hmm. So it was something yeah. that was close to my heart. And I thought, Hey, why not, why not use that little community that I've got and, and try to do something. And it was an interesting process and result. You know, we, we got like around 1200 meals for a food bank. Um, oh, awesome. they, they can stretch out a dollar into three meals. So that was pretty cool to wow. be able to do that in in such a such a short amount of time. That's awesome. That's so I love that idea. Like just like a community owned golf course like that, and like providing jobs, providing like a a place for people like you know that can go and get like an afford like to grow the game. You know, make it like an affordable process of that. That's really that's that's really cool. Damn. Yeah, and it would only take like a few thousand people that would say, "Hey, I'd like to buy a membership there," and. And then you can get your membership playtime and you can have access maybe to simulators and maybe yeah. even have like, you know, little Airbnbs there. And then people can kind of benefit from being the first time owners or starting that project. Um, and then you could get, you know, marketing going and get some sponsors involved. And and then that's where those youth programs could could get going and education through that that project and and really anything that the members want to promote to grow the game. So that would be the the big dream, but yeah, m- mostly yeah. a dream for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving from the right direction, though. Yeah. What of uh? So what uh, you were kind of get ready for spring up there? I know we're we're ready to get playing here. Still got a little snow on the ground, but we're hopefully, you know, in the next few weeks or so, we can get out there and play. Are you uh, you looking forward to the same? Yeah, I mean, looking forward, yes. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more patience on our side. Um, <laughs> I live in Quebec City, so usually in Montreal, which is further south in the province, they get their playtime a little bit earlier. And yeah. it looks like this year it'll be an early spring, so I don't I don't quite know. But usually not until the end of April, I would say. Um, so we do have to wait a little bit more. 
and then it, the the season stretches into like late October. So that's the yeah. time frame we got going, like early May to somewhere in October. Um, the winter has been unusually mild here, surprisingly. It reminds me a little bit of the Wisconsin weather that I, I was used to when I lived there for a couple of years. Um, so we do have the extremes like super cold, but it's been a, a surprising few warmer days here and there, which I don't mind at all. But it doesn't it doesn't bring any golf, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're kind of. Yeah. So we're we're in Syracuse, uh, New York. It's and we're like right off of Lake Ontario. So we we get all the lake effect. And it's been we've had um, a couple of days in a row where we've had snow consecutively but like it's not that's the first time it's really happened since the winter i mean we've had a very very calm winter for the most part here which is abnormal for for us too so yeah i saw something the other day that we are like on pace for like the average winter here i think we're like six seven feet behind on snow yeah. from what we normally get which has been nice but at the same time it's still not dry enough or warm enough to get out there and golf and how and far south would you have to get to get any golf going right now like drive oh. a few hours at least yeah because yeah. we had we had talked with someone uh one of our other buddies from pennsylvania like the philly area earlier and they got snow there too so it's you know probably hours and hours like, philly's probably like four hours from here so it's probably like an eight hour drive realistically least, yeah to find somewhere where you could golf yeah yeah so a little bit but, of the same as us. Thug yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just wait it out. Just wait it out. <laughs> it's it, I didn't expect it to be this hard the first first time around. Like last last season was like the first full time season that I've kind of really put the time and decided, oh, I'm going to go all in. And mm. it brought such good things like from a mental standpoint and physical standpoint and like for me, it's probably the perfect workout at my weight because just walking it out is is a good is a good challenge. Like playing nine holes is fine, but if I walk eighteen by the end of the the second nine, I'm pretty worn out. So mm-hmm. it was all great things. But then when it came to an end at the end of the season, I was like, oh, what do I do now? Like yeah. it's not it's not easy to replace something that's so prevalent in in your life, and then it all goes to to nothing. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's been. It's been pretty rough. Hope hope you it's, guys have been hitting the simulators a little bit. Yeah, doing a little just hitting bays in the garage and and stuff like that. It's just TJ has trying to <laughs> trying to keep the swing in shape. It's I, tough when you get that, uh, you know, you just get addicted to golf and then all of a sudden there's snow and it's there's months and months that you can't really do much and it's yeah. filling that time with. That's that's why we're doing a podcast. We can't. Yeah, can't I haven't swung. I, I haven't swung. I don't think since November or October, November, somewhere in there. So I'm in the same boat. Like simulators are so expensive that at some point you gotta you gotta put a line and not cross it as far as money goes <laughs> with golf because it can get crazy pretty quick. So mm-hmm. yeah, it will be a surprise when I go when I go hit the hitting bay maybe in a couple <laughs> yeah. weeks and we'll see we'll see what we're working with. Yeah, if it's All a right. draw or a hook. <laughs> um, okay, so we got some like fun rapid questions for you. Okay, sure. Um, so you just kind of give us like your input on them. Um, when you putt, do you putt with a line on the ball or do you just kind of just set it and go? I've tried both and I haven't come to any conclusion. I, I think for me, like the stroke is probably way more important than than the line right now. So mm-hmm. I don't mind either way. And my ADHD forgets to line the ball probably half the time so <laughs> me too brother i'm right there with you man I'm right there so with it's you. like oh this this time around i've got it going and i'm not putting well and then the next time i forget and i plug well so it's like well probably doesn't matter right yeah right <laughs> i literally tell myself the exact same shit <laughs> what's a, a tv or movie character that you most relate to oh that's a good question <laughs> i i've watched a show called burn notice and okay. yeah. character yeah. is Michael Weston, and he's like that analytical spy that likes to think about everything and every little bit of every situation. So uh, that'd be that'd be who, I, who I'd relate to the nice. most, probably. That, that's Not a, a very great well-known answer. character, but <laughs> no, it's perfect. Burn Notice is such an underrated show. It's so good. One of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, are you glad a... to hear you know you know it you know who? It oh is. hell yeah! <laughs> I there was a point in time where I was watching Burn Notice, Suits. Um, I was a huge like Law and Order fan too. So like, dude, I watched all of those all the time, all the time. 
I wish I could be Harvey in suits, but I don't I don't quite <laughs> pretend to be that kind of individual. So I wish I had his poker playing skills because oh, I'd be sure. rich. It'd be great, you know. Uh, are, are you a blade car collection? Yeah, his car collection too. <laughs> are you a blade or mallet putter guy? Uh just the regular putter. So I guess that's a blade, the tiger yeah. style putter. Yeah. Um, yeah. To yeah. be fair, like the the first golf set that I got, I bought it new at a golf store here in town. And it was mm -hmm. like a set, like a tailor-made set, the M2s. Mm -hmm. And I went to the guy and I was like, hey, there is no putter in your set. And he's like, no, you got to buy it. I was like, what kind of marketing is that? Like you're selling <laughs> right. a set and it doesn't come with a putter. So he was like, let me go see in the back of the store really quick. And he just pulled out like an old ping answer from the from the trash okay. bin I guess, yeah. in the back. And it had an old <laughs> super stroke on it. So that's that's what I started with, a free putter from the back of the warehouse. And then last summer, I just moved to a $3, $3 like thrift store putter. Um, so <laughs> I don't awesome. have much invested in my in my putters, both both blades. The second one's a little bit heavier. It's got a better sight line on it, too. So I don't even know the name of it. I think it's like a Northwestern Tom Weisskopf putter or something that nobody knows anything about. So. <laughs> it's unique though. You know, yeah. So yeah, Goodbye. yeah, it's been, I haven't seen any difference from the first putter. So I'm like, well, <laughs> do I really need to invest in a putter? So I was like, nah, when I when I've got the stroke better, then, then maybe I can think about <laughs> investing in one. But for now, it's just exactly. the regular simple, simple blade that comes from from trash bins, either at the thrift trash. store or <laughs> from the warehouse, from the golf store. That's awesome. That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> Do you have a go-to golf ball, like a brand or a model that you, you like to use that at least you might feel like you play better with? Absolutely not. I just buy whatever's no. on sale and whatever's the cheapest that's got maybe compression written on the box, then mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm happy with it and I just go along with it. Yeah. I bought a big supply of the Wilson 50-50 ball last yeah. summer. Um, it was cheap and it was a good good mix between a compression ball and maybe a slower swing speed ball. So I figured that'd be a good mm -hmm. hybrid for, for the summer. Um, I think my swing speed has gone up a little bit. So I, maybe I'll have to think a little bit more about what kind of balls I, I do play. Um, I played the TP five X at the end of last summer. Cause I found like a few, I was following a guy on the golf course and I kept uh, finding his balls. So I guess it wasn't a good day for him. <laughs> he gave me a few, a few of his TP fives. So I, I did play them after afterwards, and it was it was quite the difference. Once I I could get my hands on them, I was like, oh, that's a nice feel, especially landing landing. Oops, sorry, landing them on the green. Um, yeah, I could, I could feel the difference. But when I was hitting off the tee or off the off the fairway, I couldn't couldn't really tell. But on the green, that's when. I could tell that they would land a, a little bit. Yeah, different. I think once you start, once you start realizing that your irons and your wedges are actually compressing the ball, that's when it's like you start mm -hmm. to really feel the difference a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's like before I, I always used to think I knew the difference, mm -hmm. but it, now it, it's really. I mean, the driver and woods, it's like you can't really feel it, but with the wedges for sure, it's like you kind of almost feel it gripping a little bit and. Uh, yeah, and I Having still those, lose those way too many balls to justify like <laughs> yeah, 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 or five dollars yeah. a ball. Like that's that's just right. I always I'm right there with you. I always get just the pre-owned. There's that lostgolfballs.com, and it's like you get those four or five dollar golf balls for like a buck, buck fifty, mm -hmm. and they're like still in great shape. And then you get that similar feel still of using the same ball. Mm -hmm. You know, I get like a hundred of them, and it's like. I don't know, 70, 80 bucks, but it's Dude, there's there's a place that's around us too that I, I went out. I remember a couple of times last season. I they they're like refurbished golf balls, or they're just like golf ball like that they, you know, clean up or whatever. But there was one that had it's like eight or nine bucks for like 14 balls, I think it is. And they were all Titleist ones. And like I was like, oh, all right, cool. I'll just take these <laughs> and use them. And I I like those ones, but I also really um when we were talking to um um our buddy in PA, I mean, he was talking about the uh, uh, the noodles. I kind of, I might try those out too. So yeah, the the ball industry is crazy. There are so many options, and like you said, like you can just go on the used market, and I think that's that's probably the way to go. Like you're gonna lose them anyway, so might as well <laughs> might as well <laughs> yeah. find them somewhere in the cycle where you're not the one paying five bucks, and you're probably better off like that. You're not yeah. wrong. You're not wrong. Um, so last one here. If you weren't golfing, 
what else would you be doing with your life? That's a good question. I'm trying to figure this out right now this winter because I'm not golfing. So <laughs> I guess a lot of working for now. Like like I said, I'm transitioning away from from teaching. I'm working as a sports and leisure director at a golf community uh, or at a local community center. Um, so I'm trying to bring golf into their activities over there, trying to convince them that they need some hitting bays at their community center. So I'm I'm working on that. But yeah, other than that, I like uh, I like walking, but mostly in the summer. I don't I don't do well in the winter outside. Um, I like to swim. Surprisingly, people are surprised when I say that. <laughs> Like, oh, that guy can that, that guy can swim. I was like, yep, yes, you can I still do, swim. I do swim. I float. I float pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but I like swimming, and and if I could have it, I think traveling would probably be a big part of my of my life. I'd love I'd love a job in the golf industry where I live somewhere south, um, somewhere warmer than I'm right now, and I'd love to mm -hmm. have a traveling aspect to it. So that that would probably be what would encompass my life if uh, if golf wasn't around. So, and then we, um, I, I lied. There is one more and it's more of a personal question for me because we're, I was on Instagram. Uh, it's like doing our research, you know, cause we wanted to make this seem professional. Uh, you're a big wrestling fan. Are you not? Yeah, I do like wrestling. Sure. Dude, me, do me too. I love it. Uh, give me your WrestleMania predictions. So is it Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns? Is that what, what they've decided? What I've been hearing is that night one it's going to be Roman versus The Rock, and then number two would be Cody versus Roman. But I don't know if that's going to happen. I feel like it's got, it's got to be Cody. I think it's going to end up a triple threat. I think it's going to be The Rock versus Roman versus Cody. I think you've got to use that as a chance to thank Corey for carrying pretty much the company more than right? Roman Reigns, I feel like. 100%. Like he's, he's the face of every angle and every... Every little moment, every week, week in, week out. So uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big Cody Rhodes fan. So Hell yeah. I, I liked what he did when they came to town this summer in, in Quebec City with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And yeah, they had that big pop and they were working against Judgment Day. And then Cody Rhodes came in and kind of helped them Heck um, yeah. and helped them win. So, yeah, I would love that to happen. And I think that's that's the way to go. They'll work. Uh, my day job is that I work with people with developmental disabilities and getting them back into the community. And uh, one of the kids I support, he loves wrestling. So they're actually the WWE is going to be in Syracuse the weekend before WrestleMania. So we're going to I'm bringing him to the event. So I get to go watch them all literally the it's on a Sunday. And then obviously Ma, Raw would be on Monday. But that that whole week is uh, WrestleMania week. So we get to see their like basically last live show before WrestleMania. That kid will have a, such a fun time because it was my first time going last summer to a live event. And I went there with low expectations because I've always watched casually on TV, but I didn't know if I'd get a kick out of being there live. And I was actually playing golf and I was on the last hole and I looked up tickets like maybe an hour before the show and they were 30 bucks for a floor ticket. So I was like, yeah, hey, let's just try it. Let's just go. And <laughs> one of the best live experiences of my life, like, dude, there's, it's so much fun. Games, baseball games. I've been to quite a few and, and it's like it's up there. It's it's so fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cool. So what's uh what's one goal you have for yourself in your golf game this coming season? I think it'll be to play as much as I can because with the new job I'll be I'll be quite busy and I'm trying mm -hmm. to turn my finances around a little bit. So I, I stretch my money thin transitioning from teaching to a new job. So just yeah. figuring out how I can golf as much as I can um, will be the big goal. And then I kind of want to get a little bit more serious with my with my weight loss. Um, I did well last year and I, I lost a bunch of weight and I've been maintaining that weight more than, than losing in the last few months, which is a big, big win better mm -hmm. than, than playing the, the yo-yo game all the time. So yeah, yeah. I, I really want to really want to focus on that and just get, get healthier and keep losing the weight. And, and then if I could shoot like under 85 at a legit golf course, that would be, that would probably be the more specific you know, number goal that I'd like to, to achieve that feel, that feel nice. Like a nice 84, 85, that. Yeah. That would oh, yeah. Happy. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks oh, a bunch, Sam, for taking the time. And, uh, yeah. you know, I look forward to having you on again sometime. We got to meet up at some point too. I know we talked about somewhere up here in the Northeast of the U S or, uh, to get a, to get around in hopefully this summer. 
yeah, that'd be fun. And I'm always happy to do anything involving golf with you guys. So pleasure being on. Thanks for, for having the French Canadian on. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. hopefully you guys were able to understand me. Sorry if I mispronounce a few words. But... My my last name is actually French Canadian as well. So it's 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 uh, it's Carpentier, but it's Carpentier. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So there you <laughs> go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick too, where can everybody kind of find you on socials and uh and all just fat to fit golf on Instagram. That's pr pretty much the only one that I've got going. It's cool. it hasn't been very active in the last last few months, but I'm always happy to chat in the DMs and, and talk with people and maybe this summer I'll I'll resume if I figure out what I do want to do with, with that account. Awesome. Absolutely, man. Thanks for being on with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it for sure. Thanks to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> right, we'll talk to Take you soon. Care. That was pretty cool having Sam on. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we talked about, I mean, everything, golf, fitness, wrestling. We're kind yeah. of all over. So, <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully we do get up to, to meet him for a round somewhere in the Northeast once springtime finally comes. Uh, hopefully he gets through winter up there and the, gets golfing soon enough. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you guys go follow his uh, Instagram page and, uh, you know, just tell him what he thought about the interview and whatnot. And uh, hopefully we get to talk to him again soon. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.